Welcome back to the Brentford save guys. We are not far away from the end of season one today as we start. We've Aston Villa in the opening game of the episode. We've actually four games today. Villa, Tottenham, Chelsea and Norwich. We'll play Tottenham and Sim Chelsea and also finish off with the game against Norwich. And we could even, depending on how results go in the meantime, relegate Norwich. Or they could, in fact, are they even already relegated? Uh, they have five games to go. They're already down. They're actually already... 33 games played and they are already doomed to the championship for next season, Norwich. 14 points from those 33 games. They can only amass 29 points. So, in fact, they were relegated last week as well. Oh, Norwich, you have not had a good season. Missing Emmy Buendia, one imagines. We start with some news that we've had some... Uh, player sales. Jean Vier has completed his move to Atletico Mineiro. Uh, I've also accepted a bid for good as well. He should be on his way soon. David Raya is continuing to grow and up 3 to 76 rated now, which is fantastic news as he's continuing to improve. Olsen has now completed that positional change as well from a left mid. We're going to move him. We are changing him to Cam and that should significantly boost his overall. And it has up to 69 now from 66, or 67, I think, as we uh, headed into that move. So 80 to 84 potential for him. These potential windows are really looking very good now. Samuelson doesn't look like that potential window is going to be that good. So I may let him go. But these other guys, I think it's going to be a case of calling them up and sending them out on loan. Frederick Olsen can come straight into the squad. But the rest, it's going to be a case of calling them up and sending them out on loan next season to, fingers crossed, get them the first team football that will see them have a part to play by the time they come to uh, find themselves on the fringes of the Brentford squad. We'll start with Aston Villa away today and hopefully we can pick up some points. They are 14th in the table, so not that far behind us. Uh, 36 points for them, 43 for us. We kind of... Oh, I don't imagine we'll finish any lower than 12th. Although we actually have a couple of games in hand on a number of sides around us, thanks to other results going our way over the past weekend or so. We have an outside chance of Europe. It is a, an outside chance, but we could replicate Ipswich back in oof, the early 2000s, was it? When Ipswich came up from the Championship and finished fifth. We were able to get themselves uh, then UEFA Cup football. Maybe we could do something similar with Brentford. Well, we'll, we'll find out over the course of the next episode or two. Right, drop the video a like if you're enjoying this save and looking forward to Season 2 when it arrives. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on Season 2 when it arrives. And let's go to Villa Park. The villains have Emmy Martinez continuing on in goal. Matty Cash as we concert Tyra Mings and Matt Target as you would expect at the back. Douglas Louise and John McGinn in the middle. Emmy Buendia, Ike Muniain who's a new signing in this save. El Ghazi and uh, Ollie Watkins. Leon Bailey still on the bench. Wesley an option. Bertrand Traore is still an option on the bench as well. Very capable side, Aston Villa. Obviously now without Jack Grealish in real life. Uh, I don't know where Grealish is in this save, actually. He should still be at Villa. But he's not in the starting lineup here, that's for sure. And I don't think he was on the bench either. Ike Muniain may have come in and taken his place. I don't recall Grealish moving on anywhere in this save. Regardless... Villa are a dangerous team, having a, an underwhelming season down in 14th. Certainly in real life, I expect them to be better than that this upcoming season. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do a Premier League predictions video. If I do, then uh, you'll see it over the next 24 to 48 hours. But stuff like that doesn't really tend to do that well on the channel, so I don't even know whether it's worth my time, to be honest. We'll wait and see whether you see it or not. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on FIFA, try and get ourselves... Some points on the board to improve our position in this Premier League. That's a good move as well. And Mbermo will look inside for Ivan Tony, who is absolutely our best player. Oh, that wasn't meant for you, Josh. If you can find the man in the middle that hit Matty Cash's arm, is it inside or outside the box? I think it's inside the box. I think Lee Dixon just said pointing to the spot. Matty Cash with his arms up in the air. If he's on the line, it's in... Oh, he's definitely in the box, isn't he? He can't do that. You can't do that. Absolutely a penalty. Ivan Tony. We'd be probably close, a lot closer to the relegation zone if we weren't for Ivan Tony's goals this season. Oof. Just inside the post. We can hopefully pull ourselves further away from the relegation zone this season. Brentford 1, Villa 0. 
Emmy Buendia. Nice little back heel to Douglas Louise. And here's Ollie Watkins. Former Brentford striker as well. There are a number of strikers that tend to score a lot of goals for Brentford and then get a move to the Premier League. Ollie Watkins and Neil Mopé being the two most recent. Ivan Tony had Brentford not gotten promoted, you imagine, would have been the third to do so in recent times. But thankfully for the club, they got themselves up to the Premier League as a whole rather than just one single player earning the move. I'm very intrigued to see how Ivan Tony does in the Premier League. He has absolutely smashed the championship. Like, absolutely fucking destroyed it. So I'm really keen to see how well he can do in the Prem. Obviously, FIFA is not a good uh, f gauge of ability when it comes to what's actually going to happen in real life. Although we have predicted so many transfers in our saves over the years. But when it comes to actual player ability, obviously FIFA means nothing in terms of uh, real life with regards to players' potential, etc. But Ivan Tony is performing in this save right now as he has done in the championship in real life last season. So he definitely does have the quality to, to do what he's done. Oh, he's offside and that was on his right foot. Definitely does have the quality in real life to do what he's done in this save. But whether he will or not, I'm not sure. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section. How many goals do you think Ivan Tony will score in real life this season for Brentford? And where do you think they'll finish in the league? Target down the left. El Ghazi. Filling in on the left-hand side where Jack Grealish would have been. Oh, that's a lovely ball. On the volley, he's got to finish that. Well, Emi Buendia might well be the Grealish replacement for Villa in real life. And if he does that plenty of times, then certainly you have to agree. Quality player, Miliano Buendia. Absolutely superb for Norwich. It's no surprise that even despite Norwich's promotion, he's found a move elsewhere to a bigger club with higher ambitions and better quality. Sorry, Norwich fans. Hell of a volley. Hell of a volley. Back to Douglas Louise and McGinn. Forward nicely to Ike Muniain. Have to tuck in with Rico Henry here. Muniain going for goal and hit me outside the post. Wow, what an effort. El Ghazi, how's he squeezed that in from there? Villa lead by two goals to one. Muniain unlucky not to have tucked his home, but... Mm, keeper, please. You've got to keep that out your near post. It's a hell of an effort from Ike. But it keeps... There's no way, absolutely no way you can get beaten like that at near post from there. That is absolutely unacceptable from David Raya. It wasn't even like it was rifled right into the top corner. It was literally at him there. That's poor from Keeps. That's really poor. But you have a funny feeling that it doesn't really matter what goalkeeper you got in goal. Sometimes near post OP is near post OP. So perhaps we shouldn't place too much blame on David Raya. It might just be a FIFA thing. Again, driven out to Leon Bailey. And to Watkins and back to Bailey again. Pontus Janssen's trying to keep up with Leon here, but I can't get anywhere near him. He's going to have that option back here in Matt Target. And then short to John McGinn. Don't let him shoot on his left. Oh, he's going to lay it across. Not exactly what I was after there with the clearance. I pressed the wrong button, but we got away with it. To Silva, I look for... Ah, Jens first, and then go to Tony. I still haven't had a chance to bring those substitutes on. I really wanted to give Sergei Canos the opportunity to try something in a, in a central cam roll, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get the opportunity to do so, at least not for not for as long as I wanted to. McGinn will pick, probably pick up a yellow for that. If you're not going to... Oh, I mean, I, I couldn't have gotten to it to let play continue, I guess. De Silva off then, after earning that foul. Canos into the central role. What can he do with minimal time to play? Play Ivan Tony in for an equaliser. Nearly. Nearly. Dam's got with the delivery. Ivan's up. Headers off target. And wide. We will lose this one, unfortunately, by two goals to one. Final whistle sounds. And a hard fought victory for Aston Villa coming from behind to take the lead and then not relinquish it. Still frustrated at the way that Angazi's goal, El Ghazi's goal went in, sorry, but. Take nothing away from Buendia's volley. That was superb. Same amount of chances each. They just scored theirs and we didn't score ours. They dominated possession as well and their pass accuracy was much better. We need to be... We need to be better than that. When you take a 1-0 lead, albeit yes, away from home. Ah, oh, Charlie Good hasn't been able to 
Agree terms with the Portuguese side, so unfortunately he won't be leaving us. Not to worry. Right, up next, Tottenham. And I don't know if actually that's going to lead to any points today there either, to be honest. I've had another bid for Charlie Good, this time from Cadiz in Spain, which I will accept. Also accepted a bid from, uh, or for Valencia, sorry, from Coritiba. Only a million pounds, but it's more than what he's valued at, and Cadiz have offered more, in fact, more than Ferreira did. So, absolutely accept that. Two players that are of no use to me whatsoever. Hopefully. Oh, I suppose a second. How is the title fight? So hopefully we can cause an upset here. And then it was taken about by the fact that Tottenham was second. They need to win this, really, to close the gap on United to just four points with five games to go. Pretty desperate for the three points here, Tottenham, you would have said. But also pretty likely to get them. Spurs, second in the league, trying to chase the title. Hugo Lloris, Oye, Badia, Chile, Davinson Sanchez and Regulon. Giovanni Lo Celso and Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, Steven Bergwijn and Dombele and Kung Min Son. With Harry Kane still leading the line. How long will that be the case in real life? We shall wait and see. Some options on the bench, but actually it doesn't look like an exceptional squad for Spurs. Just a really strong 11. Uh, into the starting lineup uh, comes Sergi Canos in a central cam roll to give him an opportunity to maybe force his way back into the 11 in a role more central to what he's used to playing for us. We'll wait and see if it actually works. He and Josh De Silva could create quite an impressive partnership. It's also to Ndombele and Badia Chile as Tottenham deal with our first attack. Also got Joel Anderson starting at right back, hoping that he can have a better performance than the last time he pulled on a Brentford shirt, where he switched off at the back immediately after coming off the bench as a substitute, and we conceded a goal. I, th I think, actually, Ethan Pinnock is also starting at centre-back too. So with a number of changes to the starting lineup for this game, hopefully it pays off for us. Canos, oh, is within a couple of feet of having our first proper chance of the game as well. One thing that does perhaps slightly worry me about having Canos in that central position is he's not going to be thinking about defending at all. And obviously Jensen is more of a box-to-box -box player that can get stuck in defensively as well as try and influence things going the other way. But none of that really came from Canos' side of the field. It was just a good Tottenham move. Human Son gives them the 1-0 lead. We're on the back foot early doors, but they're desperate for these three points, as you could see from the league table when we showed you it. Kane to Son to back of net. We've seen that before. To Canos. Hopefully the lack of defensive cover in central midfield is counterbalanced by extra offensive creativity. I have nailed Harry Kane there and <laughs> gotten away with it. Is the referee actually paying any attention? That is one of the most clear fouls I think I've ever committed. <laughs> Okay, well, we get away from it, or get away with it even, and we might even have the opportunity for a goal. Imagine if we'd scored after I absolutely, definitely, 125 bajillion percent definitely fouled Harry Kane. Downs and Sanchez with the cleared header will try again and look for Ivan Tony for a second time. Lloris gets to it to punch it. Son might keep this in, you know. Oh, Boma does well to get to it. Justin Silva's not going to do much on his oh, left, but Ivan Tony can do a lot on his right. And all that came. From that nailing of Harry Kane. Ivan Tony scores for Brentford again. I think that's his 20th goal of the Premier League season so far. Indeed it is. And we're level at home against Spuds. Kane. Fox by Christopher Ayer. That was a tackle that Hoiberg put in that led to that popping free for us. But free for us it popped. And forward will come again. Canos to De Silva quickly then to Damsgaard. Oh! oh! For a moment. For a moment. You thought that was going in. Pinnock. Caught in possession. Hoybier. I've got to close the man down and mark Harry Kane at the same time. Somehow we've been able to do it. Oh. Just when I think I've been able to nullify the threat, he then finds the pass. Oh, it's fine. We've pushed him wide. We pushed him wide. We'll just block the block the ball when it comes in. 
managed it really, really well. Then I make the decision to go and close him down. And I, uh, in attempting to block it, actually moves his leg out of the way of the ball to then find Harry Kane in the middle. And he's not going to miss from six stars with open goal, is he? 2-1 Spurs. And to try to get a look at the run of Anderson on the right-hand side. And we're going to have Josta Silva in the middle. Josta Silva! Over the bar and far away. Oh, just... He was just on his way back down from his jump, which meant he got underneath it and it's gone over the top. We can't deny that we haven't had the chances in this second half to get a second goal. We've matched Tottenham for the most part in everything other than clinicality in front of goal into Harry Kane. Well, one by Pinnock. Just him giving the ball away that costs us earlier on, but winning it back here might set up the move that finds us an equaliser to counterbalance. That goal that he ended up inadvertently helping them score. We've got all the way out wide here. Joel Anderson is forward and in a great position. We'll stand the ball into the middle. Tony will knock this down and it isn't close enough to Damsgaard for him to be able to shoot. Tony with a shot blocked well and no corner for us either. Serge Aurier keeps it in play. Oh, I thought the knockdown with Tony was the right thing to do. They just didn't quite get it into Damsgaard's path to Silver in the way there. And that's his last action as... Made a couple more changes, but it's going to be too little too late now by the time they actually get onto the field of play. It's frustrating that you can make a change in like the 60th minute, but the, the ball just does, doesn't go out. In the end, the players don't get the chance to come on and make an impact. Canos, well, get up. Well, up on Bomo, please, ref. Let me, no, get this forward to Elliot Weaver. It's a defeat against Tottenham to go with the defeat against Aston Villa. And with a game midweek that we're going to sim against Chelsea. Oh, come on, come on. I deserve more from that one. I deserve more from that one. With a game against Chelsea coming up, I don't think things are going to get any better for us, are they? Chelsea come to us then. You can see their lineup on the right. Ziek on the right hand side had a nasty incident in the uh, UEFA Super Cup yesterday, as I record this, last night. Had his arm in a sling. I haven't actually seen any updates yet on what his situation is, but he's been in cracking form for Chelsea pre-season. The rest of the side, well, in fact, the, the side in general looks as you would expect it to, really. No shocks in that starting lineup whatsoever. No new signings for Chelsea breaking their way through. Imagine they'll beat us. We get a, we get a point. Ivan Tony with a late equaliser in the 88th minute after Ziek himself, as we... Gave him a little bit of a boosted ego. He went and uh, took that ego onto the field and scored a goal. Charlie Good is gone. There we go. Good sold. Two careers for 1.6 million. 1.2 million will be added to our transfer budget for next season. Now then, relegated Norwich. If ever we were going to get three points today, this would be the game to get them. Or the most obvious opportunity to get them. They are shite this season. Norwich, let's go and compound their misery. Relegated Norwich City with Michael McGovern in goal. Max Aarons is still here. Zimmerman, Tim Closer and Jakob Sorensen. Rup and Liz Melou. Milo Rosicza, Kieran Dowell and Poicetta with Timu Puki up top. Milo Rosicza in real life could be an absolutely cracking signing for Norwich. I don't think they're going to survive this season. But he and Puki could create quite the partnership up top for Norwich given the opportunity. And if they can keep hold of Todd Campbell as well, maybe Norwich stand a chance. They haven't stood any chance in this season, though. And it may be an indication of things to come for the Carroll Road faithful. But dare I say it, they're getting used to it over in Norwich. The ups and the downs and the, <laughs> the roller coaster ride that is the yo-yo of Premier League to Championship again and again. But at least you're guaranteed to have one successful season every two, eh? <laughs> that successful season will have to come next year for Norwich in this save because relegated... Without a single hope in this save. And hopefully we can get ourselves three points here. We're playing a rotated 11. With Weaver, Canos, Sondergaard, Nurgar. All in the starting lineup. Hopefully still good enough to get victory here. With a free kick. Oh, Christopher Ayer. Was not letting anyone else get to that. Oh, good footwork from Rosicza though. Excellent footwork. That will... Full free for us though as we get the tackle in. He perhaps tries to do a little bit too much. And with bodies committed forward for that set piece. Space in behind. 
Sorry, Norwich. Oh, brilliant save by McGovern. I was certain we were going to score there with Mbemo on his left-hand side. And it was destined for that bottom corner, I think. Ah, not quite as in the corner as I would have liked it. Maybe from the corner itself. Nope. We'll have to wait for the goal to come against Norwich. I don't think I'm jinxing myself by saying that that goal will come sooner rather than later, though. Cross to Poiteta. Not sure. It's kind of similar to that Tottenham move. Do we close the man? Do we close the ball? We'll mark the man or close the ball. Pontus Janssen getting stuck the hell in. Nicely done. Norwich are getting very adventurous with the amount of men they're pushing forward. Playing without freedom. Or oh, sorry, with freedom now that they're relegated. But Mbermo this time does find the bottom corner the way that I wanted him to the first time. They may be playing with freedom now, Norwich. But they're still just as poor at the back as they have been all season. Discipline or no discipline, Norwich lose football games. Whilst Norwich haven't really been that good going forward. They might have a chance here, actually. No, nope, we're putting it into it with Pontus Janssen, are we? We're not. Still not. Still not. Good save by Raya. Just scuffed at it there, the man in the middle. He's getting booked here, Milot Rashica. Entirely too sure what for, actually. But Norwich pushing for an equaliser. Nis Malou with the delivery. It's not bad. Flicked on, but Nergaard will get that away to Josta Silva. And I've got Mbermo forward. And that's not going to beat the man, is it? Okay, well, 1-0 to us at half-time. Quite happy with that. Quite happy with that. Full-time as well, to be fair. Three points is all I care about after the last two games. Doesn't matter how it comes about. I just want the win. Run and move. Ended by Pontus Janssen, though. Sondergaard. Everton have equalised against... Arsenal, Isco getting the goal. That's the first we've heard of Isco at an Everton, or at Everton, in an Everton shirt. What can we do here? Oh, Canos has turned beautifully. And Sernagar, Ola, Ola, 2-0. The youngster's at it again. He's still very lowly rated, but I tell you what, he puts himself about. We've gotten ourselves, perhaps, a future superstar here. Ola Sundergaard into the box, holds off the man and buries it. 2-0. So Rashid to two Aarons. The whole defence just kind of stood there in a line and held their line, trying to maybe play someone offside. Ball will still rebound around here for Norwich. Christopher Ayer is determined not to let them score a goal. But they've scored a goal. <laughs> 61st minute, Norwich pull one back. Lise Melu, their new signing for this season. Well done, lads. You've pulled it back to 2-1. You're still going down. I got a little bit carried away with Christopher Ayer there. Never mind, eh? Norwich could be finding themselves an equaliser here. No. Ricker Henry. Ricker Henry loves defending. He is a master at left-back for us. I've been surprised he's been as solid as he has been, Ricker Henry. He's always been a decent go-to for left-back in career mode saves. But to be as, as consistently top draws he has been this season I, I'll be honest they have been surprised Sundergaard finds some Burma we could be in for three I tell you what and he's weak aside that's a hell of a finish we are in for three sorry Norwich you tried but nope it's going to be three points for me thank you Ulla Sundergaard with an assist now to go with his goal as well and Burma has another close that played over Roslu gets to it Sorensen that definitely hit an arm absolutely hit an arm Free kick for Norwich in a promising position, actually. Rashitsa looks like he probably will go for goal here. I wouldn't blame him if he does. 28 yards out. Kieran Dell off for them. They're probably going to lay this off then. Adam Ida coming on. Rashitsa leaves it. And yes, they are going to lay it off to Lise Melou, who strikes it very well. Very well indeed. Ball goes over the top, though, and it's a corner instead. And Lise Melou will deliver. And deliver well, actually. And Sorensen, he was under some pressure, but certainly should have gotten that on target. Five minutes to go, still 3-1 here. So Norwich looking for another. Four minutes added on at the end of the game. Bit unnecessary, really. I don't think there needs to be that many added on. Adam Ida, oh, that's a nice ball to Albertino Dutra. I've just overrun it. Christopher Ayer will turn away, though. Calmly deals with it. And the game will be over. Please? Thank you, ref. Three points. Nice to get the win on the back of... Well, good performance, actually, against Tottenham, but the defeat. A point against Chelsea that, well, I don't know whether we deserved it or not, but 
will take the points. So four points from today's four games sees us sitting ninth with three games to go in the season for tomorrow's episode. And we look certainly more likely to be finishing lower than we do higher. Five points to gap to Wolves, six points to gap to Chelsea, nine points to gap to Leicester with nine points available. It looks like it's going to be a battle for finishing in the top half tomorrow. Wolves are one of the sides we play, I think, aren't they? Yes, our very next game is against Wolves, West Ham and Newcastle. Wolves, West Ham and Newcastle. Wolves are 8th, West Ham are 11th. Wow, Newcastle are 13th. So two of the games tomorrow are against sides that are battling with us for positions in the league. Uh, keep working at your game, Ola, and maybe we'll see you start another one before the end of the season. But for now, that's going to be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like as ever if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss out on any more. Of course, Season 2 will be starting in a couple of days. But there's still Season 1 to end and we'll do that tomorrow. I'll see you then.